Okay, hello. Um, it's a Skinny Legend podcast, special edition video, mushroom beret. Um, had this in my mind for a long time. I really want to knit a beret that looks like a mushroom. So I am going to try and document the process. I haven't started yet, so who knows how it'll turn out. Um, whatever. Ooh, fun fact. Well, that sweater number 15 blocking on the ground back there is pretty exciting, so stay tuned for that. Um, that had nothing to do with anything, but okay, mushroom beret. So I enjoy mushroom foraging. I have mushroom socks. I really want a beret that looks like a mushroom. Um, I've drawn a little sketch of what I'm envisioning. It's kind of a crap sketch, but whatever. I'll insert a photo. But basically what I'm imagining is red top with a little stem and then the like underneath bit would be a white and like ribbed. So this will hopefully be a process slash a slight how to on how to make that. Um, I'm going to modify an existing beret pattern. There are plenty of free ones online. So I'm, if people are, what am I trying to say? I will give my instructions on how I'm modifying it so you could also modify any beret pattern. And then who knows, maybe down the line I would write down like proper instructions start to finish. But so mine's gonna be based off the best beret pattern by James and Watts. Uh, I got the pattern for free for doing a test knit. So might as well start with something that works. I think the hardest part is gonna be, I want the underside to be ribbed. So it looks like the gills of a mushroom, but obviously there's increases when you're making beret. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to do the increases um, so they don't look stupid with the rib pattern, as well as just in general, like I've never knit one before, we'll see. I also might look stupid in a beret, but I think it's the best option for like a mushroom style hat because it'll kind of look like a mushroom but still be pretty wearable. Um, so that's the game plan. Game plan is that. Um, we'll be knitting with, so I have some leftover Noro Sonata, which is outlandishly expensive, and that I bought for my camisole number five? Is that the one? Oh my god, I can't remember right now. I'll insert the photo, maybe, but... You know, the My Favorite Things Knitwear camisole number, I'm gonna say it's five. So I have a good amount left over of that. And then I picked up some Drops Lima in this kind of rusty red color. So that's gonna be the cap and these are gonna be the gills and hopefully we'll have a cute mushroom beret at the end. So the way that my particular beret pattern is structured is you do an I-cord to cast on around the head and then you pick up, knit, the underside increased, then knit the top to decrease, and then I think you did a little stem at the end. So, um, we'll see how good I am at this. We'll check back in. Maybe I'll put in some footage of me knitting. We'll see. Um, I'm wearing my snowy forest right now. I don't know if you just say that kind of stuff if you're not doing a podcast. But whatever, it's my video and I just told you, so... Mm, yeah, I'm gonna do the I-cord cast on and we'll see how it goes. Okay, here we are. I'm doing my first ever voiceover. Um, I guess I could have just put music on this, but I prefer videos with voiceovers, so now I guess I'm forced to do voiceover. <laughs> I don't know why I do these things myself. Anyway, okay, so here we are just, like, doing the i-cord cast on Ooh, how fun thank god i sped it up imagine if knitting i-cord is this fast i actually hate knitting i-cord but i like how it looks so it's kind of worth the tedium anyway okay i'll finish this up and then back to me talking okay checking in oh my god it looks minuscule but i've done the i -cord cast on and I've picked up stitches um so depending on your pattern like some of them do a ribbed brim or something 
but I'm just about to start increases. So my pattern has you knit a certain amount of stitches and then place markers to start putting spots for increases. So I'm gonna start ribbing now. Um, oh my God. Okay, wait, let me try this on. I tried it on before and it was tight, but I feel like, okay, actually I think it'll be good. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, so um, I am going to start, yeah, um, ribbing, just like a knit one, purl one ribbing. And I'll start placing all of those um, all of the markers, the stitch markers to mark where I'll be increasing and then we'll see how it goes. So my plan is all increases I'll do is purl increases for the first round. So that way you'll have you know regular ribbing around and then a couple spots with like the two purl wide section. I feel like doing increases in the purls like that first will be good because the purls kind of recede more. And then in the next round of increases, I'll increase a knit stitch between the two purls and that'll give me ribbing. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I will knit a couple rounds and like maybe take some videos, not of my face, but of what I'm doing to kind of see how the ribbing looks. And we'll just keep going. The sun is starting to set though, don't love this whole time change thing, so looking at the window. The video quality might get pretty, uh, go pretty downhill from here, but when has the video quality ever been that good on my videos to begin with? And yeah, you know, this is, a, I don't stop talking, okay. Okay, so here we are, I've done a couple rounds. Um, you'll see here, so I've been ribbing, but then I did some increases here. So we have two pearls there, two pearls there. So now my next round of increases, I'm going to put a knit stitch in between these, and then that'll just continue the ribbing outwards. So we'll check in. Okay, it's day two. Um, I suffered a slight mental day cramp. I suffered a slight Manti B mental breakdown um, after we last talked, but it was dark, so I didn't like do a talking head thing, but um, I decided that I th think it would look better in twisted rib because, you know, the ribbing would be more pronounced and then it would look more like mushroom gills. So <laughs> I undid every single row of knitting and made it twisted which I do, I am happy with how it turned out. I think it looks way better. So I will update that for any instructions I make, but basically I'm now at the point where in the pattern I'm following, um, you knit a couple rows plain with no increases. So I'm gonna switch to the red so that that way the red kind of comes hopefully around the side and under the edge a little bit. I think that will give it a nice kind of, you know, mushroom cap look. So yeah, I'm going to switch to the red bit and then basically from here, I'm just going to follow the beret pattern that I'm following. Um, cause, and I'll go back to plain stockinette, not ribbed anymore. And yeah, so we'll check in further, but for now it looks like this. Do you look like a mushroom? <laughs> Yay, it's me again, the voiceover. Here, what am I doing? Okay, I've started knitting like the red top bit of the mushroom. And then here I am, oh, I finished the top bit. So I am knitting the little stem, which is another glorious eye cord. And then I'm gonna have like a fun little shot of me wet blocking this. Now, this was like a terrible idea because the red, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like bled and stained the white kind of pink. So, um, I had to block it again basically and I was like, I'm not wet blocking it again. So I had the genius idea at like midnight to use the steam wand 
of the espresso machine to <laughs> like steam it in place over this like giant plate that I had stretched it over to get the nice shape and try and get like the red edge to curl under and it like kind of worked here I took it off the plate and you can see eh, it's not the best anyway and then this last little bit is just me like super stoked to be done and I'm like weaving in the ends so that's fun um let me know if you think I should add spots on the top like some cute little white spots I wanted to talk about this but I totally forgot so I'm like forcing it into this voiceover section um but I don't know I think it would maybe be a little too on the nose if it had spots but also maybe that's a good thing and you'd be able to tell that it's a mushroom but I want to be able to wear this without it being like too cosplay -y. anyway I've cut the ends it's on my head and back to regular talking me okay finish the hat. Um, I realize I don't know how to wear a beret, so this is how it's on my head right now, but here's the way I'm angled. You can mostly see the gills, but then like here's the rest of the hat and the little ding dong, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I took some footage of me making it, so hopefully I put this in and kind of maybe voice over it or something. So yeah, it's done. Um, I've decided that I'll leave instructions in the description on how to do it. However, what I did was I went and like looked up a free beret pattern, which was like fine. Like I found, okay, what am I trying to say? I found a free beret pattern. It's relatively different from the one that I used, but it's free. And then I basically wrote up the instructions based on what I think I would do if I was following that pattern. Um, the gills would be a bit different. It's a knit one through back of the loop pearl tube versus this one I did just a knit through a regular twisted rib. So I'm not really sure how that would turn out, but I think it would be fine. Obviously you're free to adjust however you want and then whatever. So that way you can knit one if you want. Um, did tie myself so it took me about two hours to knit the red bit and then I think probably an hour and a half to do the white so you can knit the whole thing in five hours which is a couple days or a week depending on how much time you have um it could be a cute gift you know for any cottage core mushroom girlies in your life and yeah so I'm happy and I hope you enjoyed seeing how I came up with this and please tag me if you make one which is unlikely but it'd be cute um and yeah